off the window and record it. Yes. I'm not over here anymore. Um, I don't remember seeing one for you. Smith, Reed, Herrera, here, <laughs> Morris, yep. Jessup. Yes. Item number two is we skipped again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> item three is a consent agenda. Following items of a routine nature normally approved at board meetings will be approved by one vote unless any board member desires to have a separate vote on any or all of these items. Consent agenda consists of a discussion, consideration, and approval of the following items. A, minutes of October 27, 2014, regular meeting. B, activity funds and expenditures. C, approving chairman's support and planning of A, general funds. B, building funds. C, child nutrition funds. Were you on the list? I, I don't see anything. Cause I, I looked, kind of looked at it last night, but I don't remember seeing anything on there that, that I had a question about. I don't remember. You do have one, Shane. Which one um, is it? 228 for the bus. That looks like you might be on the check register there. This is a new one, isn't it? I don't have the one. That's for the checks that are wrote. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Oh, yeah, you are. 228, is that mm -hmm. it? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, but I'm staying on 228. And Jessup. Yes. I'm four superintendents and principals. Okay. The uh, November uh, revenue report indicates collection of total local revenue on the amount <coughs> of $54,458, which excludes the school of land. Uh, last year, FY14 for November, the uh, November monthly collection was $35,404.37. Um, gives the district total year to date local revenue collection of $258,437.72. Uh, so far, the district is within $47,486.67 of collecting our fiscal year 14 total in gross production and within $134,480.89 of collecting our fiscal year 2014 local revenue total. So year to date we're doing uh, pretty good. Gross production. Today the bid, the last time I checked it, was $75.50 a barrel <coughs> for crude. All the conventional information will tell you that your payments follow the revenue about three months. Uh, January, February, March, gross production checks. It'll be pretty interesting to see what happens to them because there's a tremendous difference between $75 a barrel and $110 a barrel. 
and I can tell you that the revenue checks being paid are different than what they were. Be more volume by them. Well, you're paid. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, there's nothing in my experience, but I have been told to get ready. That it's going to affect us. So we'll see what's going to happen. I think it would be uh, wise to keep that in the back of our mind and be prepared for it. Um, the thing about gross production is it's a county-wide issue. Gross production entails, <coughs> excuse me, for our school district, entails all the gross production within the county. It's put in the pool, and it's distributed on a per pupil basis. So um, when you see a new well go in, uh, as long as it's in Woods County, even if it's on the uh, east side of Alba, that affects our gross production revenue here in Freedom also. Cold weather's brought some issues, of course, always does, that uh, we have to deal with. Um, probably the most pressing is the lack of the heat regulation here in the middle hallway. We've lost the thermostat control that has completely quit working. Uh, couple that with the fact that they no longer make that type and model of thermostat um, that's on the system here. I think on the present time, you guys got any better ideas? I'd certainly be open to this. I think I'm gonna hot wire it where it's always on. That system's on a timer, and I think when we come in in the morning, we're gonna hot wire that thermostat, bypass it, turn it on with the timer. About three or four hour periods, they're gonna be getting hot. Let it go off. When they tell me they're cold, we'll turn it back on for an hour. We'll run it like that. We'll probably get a hold of Luckin Bills if I can get them to come work on it. Anytime you get anybody out here, they walk in that room, they see that deal, they just shake their head. I called the company. Uh, I'd been told that that company is still in existence. I called that company that uh, manufactured that system. Um, there is someone that owns that phone number. It is a plumbing company. And I was told they just bought that phone number from that company when they bought it out so they could get their plumbing customers. So finding someone to work on that system <coughs> is not a good thing. Last Friday, an ag truck was involved in an accident in Enid when an individual pulled out in front of it. <coughs> Everyone that was in the accident was uh, okay. Uh, I was told that... Uh, by the time the accident happened, the egg pickup was going at about five mile an hour. I don't know. I have not seen the accident report. I saw the result from the accident, and I can believe that that is really accurate. The vehicle suffered very minor damage to the front grill, uh, maybe a little bit up on the hood. majority of the damage was absorbed by the brush guard. Uh, the vehicle was drivable. They drove it back. Um, I'm in conversation back and forth with our insurance company on proceeding uh, with the claim. So, we're working on that. Until, uh, last, this past weekend, Saturday, our uh, third through seventh football team, I'd say, concluded the season with a really nice banquet honoring team. Uh, we honored the overall MVP of the team, Lance Bowler, offensive MVP, Jackson Hill, defensive MVP, Duke Morris, and the most inspirational player, Samson Lights. And we started an award called the Eagle Award uh, for best overall performance, sportsmanship, hard work, dedication. That was Lance Bowler. And that plaque is uh, in our trophy case. It's a deal where we're going to add a name every year to the one kid who exemplifies being a a great football player, not just, you know, on the field, but off the field as well. And that's something that we're excited about. Uh, basketball season, we're going now. Our girls' team right now is 2-1. and one. They have uh, a forfeit win over Fellowship Baptist from Liberal, Kansas. Uh, beat Higgins, Texas, and one loss against Yarborough. Boys are 1-2. They beat Yarborough and losses against uh, FBA and Higgins. 
And speaking of Higgins, last Friday we hosted uh, hosted them for homecoming. This year our court consisted of the boys, Christian Herrera, Ismael Antaveros, Marcus Hill, and Connor Mullins, and the girls, Nicole Hughes, Iridian Herrera, Emma Reed, and McKenna Nixon. Homecoming king was senior Connor Mullins, and the queen was senior McKenna Nixon. So congratulations to those kids. Um, in case anyone missed it, the Freedom Cheerleaders unveiled a new member of their squad at homecoming this past Friday. Rowdy the Eagle was introduced to all the fans at the game. And he'll stay as a fixture of the school for years to come as our mascot. Um, tomorrow night we'll be playing Dares at Texas here at Freedom starting at 5. And on Friday, <laughs> Friday, Friday, Friday we'll turn around and host Fort Supply starting at 6.30. We hope to see everyone there. Um, recently we received new elementary junior high basketball uniforms from Compass Athletics and Woodward. I want to commend Mr. Eric Wheeler for getting the uniforms to us in a very timely manner. He was, we put him up on a pretty tight deadline and uh, he came through for us in a pinch. Uh, I want to thank the Booster Club as well for paying the bill for all the uniforms as well. Um, a week from today, uh, it's coming Monday, Booster Club will be hosting their annual supper and dessert auction to benefit students at the school. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to attend. Uh, a couple of things that I didn't put on this report. Port. Uh, I, no, I don't remember. Uh, just one of those things that kind of slipped my mind. Um, our basketball schedule had 19 games. Um, we can have 20. And I got a call. Uh, Goodwill, they had a cancellation. Wanted to know if we would be willing to come out there or them come to us. Basically, they flipped a coin and they won so we're going to go out there for high school but he's going to come they're going to bring their junior high and elementary to us uh so they're coming for elementary and junior high with us on monday december 15th and then on friday january the 9th that's that first week we come back from break we're going to go out to goodwill and just play a high school game with their girls and boys so that puts us at 20 games we're pretty much maxed out um, at this point so um, something else that came up with uh, discussions with teachers um, was Christmas play and that's going to be coming up before we meet again um, right now we've got that tentatively set for Friday December the 12th and I'll be I was going to look because I thought I don't know if we have that on our school calendar on the internet yet or not. No, not yet. So, Friday, December 12th, we'll, you know, do a production probably during the day and then one at night there for parents and such. Um, you got that down at 7? I think so. That's what we were talking about at 7. Um, I know, and Mr. McQuestion, you'll have to help me on this one. Uh, we had a student, FFA student, the Laundry Galindo who went to Enid, is that right? Yes, where and the, where the wreck was. Huh? Where yeah. the wreck was. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were on their, <laughs> their deal when they had the wreck. Um, Laundry Glendale that day competed in a speech contest. That's where they were, what they were down there for, and she won the whole thing? She qualified for state. Qualified for state, okay. Uh -huh. So that was uh, a good good one on her. Um, but I know that's something that Alondra really practiced a lot um, to get better at and she obviously has gotten better at that um, I know our sirloin club is going to meet this Wednesday night um, Freedom Sirloin Club they had an issue with uh, the local show I think they're going to be discussing uh, some possible dates for that because the original date that they set ended up conflicting with the county show so they're going to have to talk about what we're going to do there um, this Friday our sixth graders are going to go over to Northwest Tech for a career day that's something that they do every year at the at the Votech they help the sixth graders come over and go through the program look at everything um, NOC will be here on Wednesday to talk to seniors and juniors and um, a lot of things going on are they the uh, ag deal or the stock show 
or is are they thinking about having it on a weekend maybe like on a Saturday instead of a Friday during school or something like that that's what they're going to be talking about yeah I'm, uh, I should be there as well so I'll be there as a representative to make sure that because I don't think we would have it during school so we'll have it on a Saturday or Right. I know that's how they did a little. I mean, there's been times where they had like half day for something, and the next day was all the animals showing. But I mean, yeah. that's, I like that'd be a, yeah. a good deal. <laughs> but I would um, I'd just remind everybody we have a lot. This basketball season, we have a lot of home games on the front end of our schedule. So and we have two home games this week. The next week, we're not playing. It's Thanksgiving break week. So. That was, I think that was kind of nice is to give them you know, a, a time off there because we start so early. And then the week after we come back from break, we'll have uh, elementary junior high games here with Island Cleo. We'll have um, Hardesty here on that Tuesday. We'll turn around and go to Fort Supply that Friday. Um, and then you'll have a game, a uh, high school game with Island Cleo. And then we have uh, Higgins. We go back. We have to go out there because they came here from Kevin. We go out there. And then the Winoki game um, will be December the 18th, the Thursday before the last day of school. So there will be a lot going on uh, between now and Christmas break. But, I mean, Christmas break is three or four weeks away. And on academic sides of things, uh, our kids will be third grade through Eighth and Algebra One and English two kids are going to be taking uh, their second sum of the test um, coming up on December the first through the fourth, um, and that will give us a good benchmark of where our kids are at the current time, and we'll be able to start figuring out, you know, where kids are, where what kids need to be remediated on, and what kids need to be pushed. So, a lot going on in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Item 5, Board to consider and take possible action to approve with and without possible changes. Disapprove and take action on selection of calendar and scheduled board meeting dates for 2015 calendar. A, option 1, option 2, new use, B, option 2, new scheduled on second meeting. Well, I didn't know if um, in the past if the board had discussed any changes, had thought about it, and really I don't know the history of uh, why the district has the uh, board meeting set as, as late the month uh, as what it does, and personally, I, I don't really care. It, it, it makes it where we pay our vendors a little bit late in the month because we're, we're we pay pretty late in the month for vendors, but it makes me no difference because I'm here anyway, just like y'all are. <laughs> However, uh, I, I think most boards tend to have their um, monthly business meetings a little earlier in the month, and um, that's the reason why. I produce two calendars. Um, the, the calendar that begins with the first meeting of 2015 is the one that begins on January the 26th and February the 23rd. That's the one that coincides with the uh, this year's calendar. That would be option one. Um, the other calendar, the option B, is the one that begins with January the 12th and January the 9th. Uh, those dates are the second Monday of the month. Um, if you were going to consider making a change uh, with us having the board meeting earlier in November to um, get away from the holidays and then early in December to get away from the holidays 
we would come back and have it earlier in January and just continue along that path so it would make sense to make a change right now but also if we um, did <clears throat> option B I have as the next agenda item to pick a particular date in the month and I picked the 20th because well, in years and years is having the 20th of the month being the, the traditional payday. You, know, you improve the pay warrants at your board meeting and then have the 20th as the pay period. And if the 20th falls on a weekend, of course, Friday, um, we get out before the 20th would be the day that that payroll was done. But, like I said, what we're doing is working, but I know I was just looking at other other things, and I think um, most schools in the county have them on the first. Uh, a couple of schools in the county have it on the first. Um, I looked at Burlington, and their shotgun approached. It looked like he just shot a shotgun at the calendar. And wherever the most pellets hit that day of the month, that's when they <laughs> scheduled it because it's wherever. And that, I guess that approach works just fine too. But that's the reason I did two calendars. Well, it doesn't matter to me. That's so Jeff. well. I mean, have they probably, always yeah. done it the last know. Joe. Monday? <laughs> I mean, most businesses don't like for December or November, say, and I send my bills out at the end of November. I don't get paid till the 15th of next month anyway. You know, that's when. Well, that's about when you get paid. Mm -hmm. You get paid about the 15th. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, our latest board meeting would be the 14th. Yeah. The checks would be signed on the 15th, and then they go out in the mail. Yeah. But Well, I know, but I, what I'm saying is like this month, I turn my bills in, at, uh, and I get them the first. You guys get them the first Monday of the month, or, or the last Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. I get my checks December the fifteenth for the month of November, so it doesn't affect me well, at all. You're talking about you. You send them out, but if you send them out and you say you get your rec. You, you get your revenue back around the 10th to 15th. Mm -hmm. You send them out about the 10th to 15th. I send them out at the, towards the end of the month. That's when I send them right, like the 30th or the 29th. Or for that month? For that month, for that month yes. Okay. And then I don't get paid till the 15th. Till the 15th? So. Well, if, let's just go with two options, mm -hmm. okay? And since September and December are, would be on well, the second option would be our two latest board mm -hmm. meeting dates. Um, and because December is the same because of Christmas right. uh, or two weeks, we won't consider that one. But in September, the board meeting date is the 21st on option uh, one. Yeah. You would approve the warrant on the 21st, the night of the 21st. Right. It would go to the treasurer the day of the 22nd, come back, either be put in the mail the 22nd or put in the mail the 23rd, mm -hmm. and it would go out to the vendors. Um, on option two, it would be approved the night of the 14th, go to the treasurer the 15th, be put in the mail uh, the 15th or the 16th. Right. Along with, like what you're saying, <clears throat> when when most businesses traditionally pay their vendors, right, as opposed to you know we're, we're traditionally a week to a week and a half late on paying vendors, and what we run into, what we run into is like our fuel man, yeah, and, and traditional vendors like that, we're always getting those vendors cut us off towards the end of the month. Constantly. Almost, would you say, nearly every month? Almost, because it's like the day of the board meeting is when uh, the payment's due. Is when the payment's due. So we're always, by the time we 
you know, get to the board meeting because it's about the time it's due. Yeah. We're always a day or two late before it, they get it. So it's just, you know, for that reason, it just moves it to a little more traditional business time of the month to pay your vendors. Like I said, it doesn't bother me. It just hadn't, it hadn't affected me very much. So, yeah. of course, I'm a little different. Yeah, you're the it. odd one. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know. Well, and, but, and it doesn't affect the operation of the school. Right. Not one bit. And it doesn't matter to me not one bit. It's just... But if they are charging us interest on that because we're late, it is affecting the school. <laughs> you know, if you're... They're not, but I know like our copier company's one that's calling every month, and it's like the week before board meeting they're calling, yeah. and they do charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're traditionally a, a week or two weeks late than, than a normal business because of the, when we have our board meetings, we're just a little bit later than... And, and even having it, you know, the second Monday of the month, it's, it's, it's kind of late, but that, there's a lot of schools that have it that late, but that would give the banks plenty of time to get the bank statements and all compiled and get them out for it. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've been on the other end of that equation also, where you had it right the first of the month, mm -hmm. and then you always have the bank saying, well, you know, we haven't had time to get our bank statements compiled for you and everything else. Yeah. And so I, I went the other way on that also. I went from, you know, right at the start of the month to back into the start right. of the second week. Right. For, for that very reason. Right. You, Joe, you've been We've plenty been, of meetings. I've never heard that we were being charged. I mean, if we're getting late fees, there's no sense postpone the money from you it's just the fact that we don't need yeah. to yeah. early enough. If they're not willing to work with us on that, we can leave the meetings, I guess. Yeah. I mean they, I mean I would think that uh, I mean we can't be the only school they're dealing with that would well by God. You know they know they're gonna get their money and they charge us a late fee anyway. Mm -hmm. They're another copy copier company. <laughs> <laughs> Those are also a dying breed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's not very many that are out servicing anymore. They're just not making money like they used to. Everything's going online, or you can scan and upload and email. Fill it out on a form and save it, send it off, and you didn't have to use a copier. Don't go there. <laughs> Just the way of the world. Not here. Sounds like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to upgrade. <laughs> it's just good for thought. Gotta get high tech someday. I don't have a problem with me either. Yeah, it don't make me no difference on that. Whatever works, whatever. You guys I'm free every Monday. No. Yeah. Unless there's a basketball game. <laughs> then I take that back. We don't have any games on Mondays, do we? It's just Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays Tuesday. the Titans are playing tonight, though. Thought. It is Monday night football. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too will come to an end. <laughs> well, I think that's the first thing they should do. They should go year round Monday night football. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have another conversation. But whatever you guys want to do, I'm good. Please do you It's your turn to sign. Make a motion. All right, make a motion that we accept option two. Right, the right. second mm -hmm. Monday's. <clears throat> second. All those in favor? Herrera. Yes. Morris. Yes. Jessup. Yes. This needs to go to the county clerk's office. We need to fax back to you with time and date stamp on it. Can you may sign this? Mm -hmm. Yes. After you get the one side, you need to, this to go to the county clerk and you need a time and date stamp on it. And we need a copy of it with a time and date stamp on it. Okay. So you want me to state it for mm -hmm. today? Yes. 11. 
Item 6, Board to consider and possible vote with selection of the P option in 2. And then in agenda item number 5, that was really easy reading. I don't know if heard of that. To change the fee in public school district data compensation for employees to the 20th day of the month. They'd get their payday before the holidays, for sure, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, if we were going out, you know, like, the only, one that's, the only time it's going to affect anything is, like, Christmas time, if we get out of school. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I didn't even look at it, but it's just like a day or so early. But I think it's like the 19th, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, on the 19th, we would, but I mean, that just... That just says oh, sure. whatever day the 20th falls on, 20th is back day. And like um, Trisha, as long as tw the 20th is not on the weekend, and she knows every month what day to date the checks. So we select the B option. We need to. That's fine. I make a motion that we. Move the pay date to the 20th of the month. One second. Mm -hmm. Yes, Morris. Yes. Jessa. Yes. I'm kind of hesitant because I'm not used to being the first one to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to, you know, somebody on that side over there. Item there. 7, board to consider and possible vote to approve, disapprove, or take no action on revision of the book policy DNA T. Performance evaluation procedures to include SLO and SLO language required by statute. All right, Mr. Hill is gone all the time. He's just running up down the road, mileage, doing That's all this stuff, <laughs> getting educated on all this new teacher evaluation, which includes incorporating how your students perform into the classroom with the teacher evaluation, which we have to submit all that data this year. It's not going to be part of their evaluation. We have to submit all that data this year. And then next year, it will be part of the evaluation. Can't be used next year, mm -hmm. but it can be used mm -hmm. the previous year. Next year's data mm -hmm. can be used the following year. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I know. Is it like a practice try, try. run? Hey, if you think this is bad, go to one of their meetings. <laughs> but anyway, and these are the people that are setting the curriculum for our kids, and right. they yes. wonder, and, and they wonder yes. why we're out of money. You don't need to leave that on camera, please. <laughs> I don't care. You I don't care. Leave that on they camera. need to hear it. However, even he, we have to have. A policy in uh -huh. place uh -huh. yes. to do all this. Yes, we do. This is the policy, hot off the presses. Now we had a DNA slash P policy. This is the new one that has it all in place. If anyone's interested in what was added, the underline was added. What was taken out was the structure. No, the deal at the bottom? Well, everything that is underlined was, was added. added. Oh, boy. Everything that is struck through was taken out of what we had. I'm, I'm, to talk about it. I'm sure he would agree with you. Why's that? You need to stay at school more often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad you talked about it. The Board of Education shall annually approve a list of form the list of options. Well, I tell you what, just typing it all in there made me mad. <laughs> Board of Education. Shall so this year they collect the data. List yeah, because the they enter the data. <laughs> options. <laughs> the they, they won't email it to me. Right? They fax it to me. <laughs> so it won't work <laughs> on, Excel, on, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. on the program. Yeah. It just scrambles it all up. So I try to run it through the program. Then it scrambles it all up. And you can see some of it. I want the email to you. They don't email it. Because if they email it to you, you can email it to all your buddies. 
it's called that. sharing. If they email, well, why won't they put? Well, if they <laughs> why why don't they leave it blank then and just have that? I've got right the frame. Just I've got the frame. But why don't they do that? Why won't they just put freedom on there for you and say there? No, they won't do that. Really well, yeah, they they will. They will do that. <laughs> it's over five thousand. Yeah. Somebody needs to call Sean and be like, look. Turn around and give that speech in the camera. <laughs> you have to realize that's, that's the biggest issue people have. They think that the OSSDA is tied in with the educational system. It's not. It's a for profit organization. For profit. Obviously, the lawyers feel like they need to be writing something. Yeah. Now this is all from the legislature. This is straight from them. Who gave me the idea? They did. Oh. Jeb Bush in Florida. This yeah. is this is Jeb Bush. This, this, is, right this is Florida special. They have been he's Jeb ready Bush to run. instituted this when he first came around down there. And they've been floating this thing for, I think they said they're on the year like 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. And it's still, they still, still haven't, they still haven't got it done yet all the way. Mm -hmm. the, word I was, the word I got is that they are still in the infancy stages in the state of Florida. And they've been doing it for over 15 years. We better adapt to them. But we're, we're going to go with just. We're going to cruise right along, huh? And we're just going to do it. We're just going to make it, mark it down their throats. Yeah. They're crazy. Because yeah, it follows them and behind so. It just amazes me how they send you this stuff and I can't spell it out. They want to use 47 different acronyms. Sue? Slow? <laughs> smart? <laughs> slow, slow, oh, bam, oh, am. After just a minute, I'm going, what does that mean now? What does that text word mean? <laughs> And I'm, after doing the type of stuff, I wonder how come I can't spell. Because you know, this stuff spells anything. So this is required, so we have to adopt it. Huh. Huh. That's, like trying that's to what there. I was told in my training, that we have to have a policy, and it has to be done by January, and it would be really good if y'all could do it before then, because it has to be done. Oh, by the way, OSSBA has a policy that they will give to you if you pay them enough money. <laughs> or you can just write your own policy. Okay. And that's, that's a mandate. But we, or we could write our own. But it has, but it has, to, to, it has to conform to state law. As long as it says what they tell you. Yeah, as long as it has it. these components. Yeah. yeah. As long as it says what they want it to yeah. say. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. You can get a smarter lawyer. <laughs> and have him write the loopholes in <laughs> So you're you're saying this year they collect the data. Next year they process the data. So next, year, no. next year they use it. They're just setting a fish line this year. So next no, year no, they no, use it, but use, it doesn't they're count. They're going to use the data we collect this year on their evaluations next year. Oh, they've got that far? This, oh, they're going to use this data on next year's. Yeah, the 14. After, after they've been evaluated, well, your kids didn't do this last year, so uh -huh. it doesn't matter what your kids did this year or vice versa. Uh -huh. So this your your quantitative data because right now it's all qualitative it's all me in the classroom observation outside doing all I'm that a, I would like to go to one of those meetings and see what everybody around says just so I could <laughs> comprehend I'm a fifth grade teacher and I'm teaching in school mm -hmm. whatever right all right and I walk in there and my evaluation, I get my test scores back. And my kids didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. And we sat down with the principal and said, hey, you know, which kids have done a little better? I said, well, 
let's pull their traditional test scores. Mm -hmm. And you can see that I had all of the lowest performing students right. in our school in my class. Right. And look at how much they actually improved their test scores. Right. So actually, I actually did the best job. Right. Of any fifth grade teacher you had in your school. Right. All right. What they're talking about on this and this data they're collecting, they're hoping to, and what their overall grand scheme is, is they're going to collect the data on every student. And when we compare test scores, if I have a left-handed kid that walks with a limp and has red curly hair, then his test scores is going to be compared to every other left-handed, red-haired, curly-headed, left-handed kid that walks with the lamp across the state of Oklahoma. Right. And that's going to be his subset. And, 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 and we're going to compare it. And that's no lie. And that's exactly how Is that not, though, the mean. dumbest thing you have ever heard in your life? And, <laughs> and, and I mean, that's what I want to know. Do you guys sit there in those and as a group go, this is the dumbest yeah, you know, of course we do. And my language was a little more colorful. Well, like yeah, but I've said, and, you know, it it won't work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's your tax dollars at work. Yeah. And on top of that, we're paying some outside entity millions and millions and millions of dollars to do this, and they start talking about you know all the things we're going to do to save fund in education. They're mm -hmm. wasting the money. This is a waste mm -hmm. because, and that's why I tell Mr. Hill, one thing they still haven't figured out how to correct is the fact that an individual, an individual walks into that classroom and evaluates that teacher. Right. How are you going to make that individual into a robot? You're not, and you're not supposed to right. because you hire me Right. To hire an individual mm -hmm. to do that job for you. Right. And that's the purpose of the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. And what? This school district ended up with an A. Mm -hmm. So I guess right. we're done. Where they're headed, though, the states want to do away with that so there can't be any. Well, that's not how they campaign. They want to give local control. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're giving lip service to one thing. Mm -hmm. But their money they're throwing at it, and their actions are going another way. If they want local control, they don't say, you adopt what we wrote for you. They say, you write your own policy. I, I agree with you. you know, you're <laughs> preaching to the choir here. Yeah. But that's exactly to, to divide those kids up through socioeconomic levels. And, you know, they start talking about the common core and, and when all the... I'm sorry, all the soccer moms found out what the Common Core was all about, and they all got up in arms about last February and March, mm -hmm. and over a period of about three weeks got the Common Core kicked out. If they ever figured out what this was about, mm -hmm. you think there was an uprising about Common Core? Yeah. When they knew how yeah, but all they did with Common Core is change the name of it, because we're still basically doing what... Well, if they ever figured out how this was classified mm -hmm. for their kids... You, you just thought they were hot back up. Yeah. <laughs> when they get word on this find is, out. <laughs> yeah. they would really be hot about this deal. Yeah. But be that as it may, this is required. Yeah. It's, it's got to be done. It's got it's got a, a date on it. Yeah. And what would happen if the entire school, independent school district in the state just said no? Give all of our money to all the parochial schools and the private schools and charter schools. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, can they already, do that? They're already giving it to a lot of them anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess they can. Hmm. Just got to start by voting in our office. Huh? So well, we did. And then we office get office this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. You just can't get any better, almost, the political backing. You can tell them. I'm not going to vote for you, and here's why. Politics is scary. Shane, you could run. 
Are you kidding me? Give up your. There, you have any, any, yeah, I don't want to talk on because we're on camera about the dirt <laughs> they can dig, so no. <laughs> You've lived a colorful life. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I can. So that's why I can sit here and say e- what, you know. <laughs> You've grown from your learn from your lessons. Absolutely. All right. See, these are the ones I have a problem. I mean, a total problem. Even saying yes to because it's just. I realize it's a law, but I mean, these are just. It's slow, and it's so. What else are we learning? It's smart. Oh, it's smart. Slow, it's smart. slow. And it's, it's sag. So smart. It sags. That's all I have with it. And we wonder what our kids are learning. <laughs> well, that's depressing. All right, let's go home. Making a motion or not? Are you asking us to make a motion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I make a motion. We approve DNAP, whatever that is, teacher performance evaluation procedures to include slow and so language. Not going to put required by statute. Oh, required by, sta- <laughs> by statute. That's required. That mm-hmm. Since that is required. Then I guess I only second that because we are uh, agree because we have statute. to by statute. <laughs> that's Otherwise funny. Because so I was getting ready to right tell you I'm not making that phone call, but no. I'm going to be in the office when you call and people are SDE to bar and say, our board won't pass it. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do with my Can we do that? <laughs> then I take my second back. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, then I take my second back. You shouldn't yeah. have given us the option. Yes, <laughs> now I have an option. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. She's going to take all day just to be there for that phone call. <laughs> We got, this, we got another month, so we got this dude on our board said this is nothing but a bunch of crock. We, we can't pass it. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee she said, Well, you just gotta do it anyway. <laughs> Herrera. Yes. Morris. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about the politically correct vote? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Jessica's screaming no. No yeah. with the <laughs> contention. Yeah. Say so yes. How to make board to consider a possible vote to enter into executive session to discuss matters involving minor child where disclosure of information would violate confidentiality requirements of state or federal law pursuant to number 25 of the Oklahoma Statute, section 307B7. Make that motion. What is it? Oh. 83803. I'll second. All those in favor? Herrera. Yes. Morris. Yes. Jessup. Yes. You need to tell me. Come on. It's you. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not used to being the first name out there. 